Welcome back, boys and girls. Today we're going to pick up where we left off and get busy with some timing. So as you can see, we put our new timing set on. We got our two gears, new chain. This is the old set. Not terribly bad, but time for a new one. And we double checked our cam degree and it turns out we are right where we need to be. So as you can see, four degrees before top dead center. And we are at 44 thousandths lift. So we're doing it right. Cam set properly. So that means we can reassemble everything and get ready to tune this thing. So let's put it together. All right, guys, we got our timing cover on, our harmonic balancer. Alternator's uh, schmolted up there, as you can see. Now it's time. Put the head on, Are you ready? As you can see, we got our head dropped in place. We got all our bolts started. Now it's time to torque them. ARP recommends about 110 pounds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do 125 and we're gonna do three equal steps. So we'll torque them all at 75, then we'll go do them again at 100, and then we'll do 125 following the manufacturing, manufacturers, whatever you wanna, ARP, Haynes, Chillins, they all have the same pattern, but we're going to essentially start from the middle and work our way out with the head, following their directions. Let's get torqued. Guys, it's been uh, about a week since we've last uh, messed with this thing. We just got uh, most of it back together and we didn't have the camera with us, but we have to get this thing going. So as you can see, the whole front end is back on, all the pulleys, belt and everything. Got our valve cover back on, all our wiring back in place, turbos back. We have finally piped the old, uh, exhaust here so that's our exhaust wastegate heat wrapped it up a little bit a couple more things we have to finish up is this throttle bracket right here it's a little close to our fuel line and so we put a rubber hose and now it doesn't fit at all so we're going to be spacing it up a little shouldn't be a problem at all my brother's just stealing a couple bolts off of our spare 4-0 motor and we're gonna put some spacers on it. So we'll show you guys in a second what that looks like. After a trip to our local coffee cans, we found the correct bolts that we need. Sender in, guy.
Now there's a little more room for the fuel line. Keep our fuel line nice and uh, tucked safe in. Safe under there, wrapped up. He also did a little clean up on the wire that rubs up against, so well it's not wire, it's the oil feed line that rubs up against the bracket for the exhaust. We don't think that's going to be a problem, but we just got to keep an eye on the oil drain also. So after trying to make some brackets, trying to bend them in the vise and not being able to heat them up correctly, we decided to go scavenging and we found some good old Cherokee parts. If you can see hiding under here, these brackets came off of the stock fuel rail here and here. They were holding, I'm pretty sure they were O2 sensor plugs. And obviously no more of that. So we took them off of our garbage Cherokee over in the corner, the garbage 4 over, over in the corner. And we used them to space up the wiring harness for the ignition coils and for the injectors. There you go guys, as you can see we drilled and tapped our compressor housing here. So that will go on there and that line will go under the turbo through here, back up to the firewall where it will be mounting this bad boy. So this is just a regular distribution block, bunch of eighth inch NPT threaded holes, plugs, comes with a couple uh, barb fittings and then some dash eight AM, I believe, or dash 10 O-ring ORB, whatever you want to call them, fittings for the end. There it is, guys, boys and girls. That is our boost block. So we got our boost coming in here from the old Chicha Reach going into the block. And then we have a line coming out going to our boost controller to our wastegate. Another line going to our blow off valve. Another line here, which is going to our fuel pressure regulator. And a one more line going through the dash, uh, through the firewall to our boost gauge. So we got our one side of our charge pipe on. Uh, we still got to put our clamps on. But on the other side, we need a couple 45s to make this bend. So we'll get back to that. But uh, tomorrow our plan is we got to make a little U-turn for our heater hose. We're, we're soldering on these fittings. These are actually for PEX in your house. So we're soldering them on. And we're going to use this to adapt copper to our regular 5 8 eater hose. We'll just have a hose clamp on there. This will go up, make a U-turn, go back in. I'll show you. Here it is, our mystical heater loop-de-loop. -loop. Piece of copper, 90-90, straight 90. PEX fitting, there you go, snoop the loop. Super simple. Sorry guys. We said that we were gonna try to get this thing idling, screw around with the idle air control a little, but doesn't look like we're gonna get to that in this video, but we got most of the stuff done that we were talking about, and we're trying to rush through this thing as fast as possible. We still need a drive shaft. We still need a couple more suspension things. We're trying to throw this on the dyno next Sunday. So you guys are excited. We're excited. Tune in next time and find out if we're gonna be ready for the dyno or not. <laughs>